No one that I know of has done a proper and real in-depth analysis video about what would happen if the Empire from the Star Wars galaxy invaded the Milky Way galaxy in the late 24th century. Now we could dig deep for arbitrary stats on ships, technology, and numbers, but we can only truly go by what we've seen each side do on screen. There will be no comparing of the gigawatts of damage a phaser can do versus a heavy turbo laser cannon. All of this detracts from what may actually happen. Since these are two separate universes, in each universe they develop separate and utterly different technologies. It's like comparing apples to oranges, or tribbles to geekas, or wookies to klingons, or gorns to trendosians. Let us say that it is the turn of the 25th century in the Star Trek universe. The Dominion War is over. The Borg, the most terrifying entity in the galaxy, have been weakened by a virus concocted by the future Admiral Janeway. This is a long story. And the Romulans have come to a respectful understanding towards the Federation. It is a period of relative peace and harmony. Let us say that the wormhole near Deep Space Nine, the Temple of the Prophets, per the Bajoran religion, seems to have become temporarily unstable. And instead of leading to the other side of the Milky Way galaxy, it has open to another galaxy far, far away. The prophets, or wormhole aliens, as Starfleet calls them, have no regard for time, and it incidentally opens to a point somewhere in the past. Starfleet would immediately send its best and brightest to begin figuring out why the wormhole shifted. When they arrive, they find that the laws of physics are slightly altered in the other galaxy for mysterious reasons. With further exploration, irresistible to Starfleet, they begin to encounter and study civilian commerce traffic, learn the local languages, and even manage to acquire through barter several pieces of technology for study. Here is what they conclude. In this distant galaxy, Transporter technology is disrupted by some form of unknown interference. Warp drive physics are largely the same, but the ships of the galaxy have hyperspace technology. The only comparison in the Milky Way galaxy would be the underspace discovered by Voyager, a vast and complex network of ever-changing subspace corridors. The travel through these corridors requires certain technology that is not overly complex, but requires maps and thorough calculations to be used. Hyperspace is ultimately much faster than warp drive, but it has its limitations. You see, warp drive is a true form of propulsion. A starship from Star Trek can travel directly from one place to another at warp speed. To travel via hyperspace, a route must be calculated that is indirect and complex, sometimes requiring several jumps to reach the destination in a roundabout manner. In the Star Wars galaxy, many of these routes have been previously discovered, and they've been mapping them for centuries. Which is why, if calculated correctly, the Millennium Falcon can make a hyperspace jump that takes it across the galaxy in days. This is why Star Wars ships have powerful navigation computers or droids to help them make calculations. Well, eventually the Imperial Navy catches wind of these peculiar ships and comes to look. The Empire's galaxy is vast, so they are kind of aloof and uncurious. Whereas back in the Federation, the wormhole shift is big news, full of anticipation and excitement. However, when the Imperial Navy does finally send a Star Destroyer to represent their might and learn more, the Federation explorers show a friendly posture and happily tell the Imperials that they are from another galaxy. The Starfleet captain, ever the bold explorer, will study the Star Destroyer thoroughly via sensor scans. The Imperial, however, demands that the Starfleet ship yield to a boarding party and submit to an inspection via standard Imperial procedure. The Imperial's intent 
is to seize the Starfleet ship and learn everything they can, even if it means tearing the ship apart. Well, of course, the Starfleet captain refuses, and a conflict begins. The Star Destroyer first tries to lock on with a powerful tractor beam comparable to what the Borg used. Starfleet has experience with such shenanigans, rotate shield modulation, and prevents the tractor beam from locking on. So the Star Destroyer resorts to bashing the shields down with turbolasers. In very short order, even Starfleet shields cannot withstand the barrage from these massive weapons. And the ship opts to enter warp and get the hell out of there, leaving the Star Destroyer alone and calculating a hyperjump to pursue. And calculating. And calculating. And calculating. But here's the major problem. Hyperspace routes are savagely complex, while a Starfleet ship at maximum warp bounces around from system to system, avoiding all the predictable and mapped hyperspace exit points, making it almost impossible to realistically pursue it. Meanwhile, Starfleet has gathered a great deal of information and even samples of technology. Several exploration ships warn one another about the Empire's hostile stance and bring back the new tech and information to the Federation for in-depth analysis. Meanwhile, the Empire is busy. Over time, they discover the wormhole themselves and set to work blockading and quarantining it. When Federation ships come anywhere near the wormhole on the Empire's side, the gravity well generators of the Imperial's interdictor cruisers work the same on warp drive as they do on hyperdrives, preventing any from escaping. The Empire captures several Starfleet ships for study themselves. True, the tractor beams don't always work on Federation ships, but swarms of TIE fighters or TIE bombers are able to easily catch the swift Federation ships and disable them. The Empire sends a little incursion through of its own, a few scout ships mainly. The Federation, not wanting to provoke an incident, would attempt to try diplomatic channels and let the Imperial scouts look around. The Imperials are severely limited to sublight speed, however, as they have not had a chance to map any hyperspace lanes in the Milky Way galaxy. To do this, the Empire must send several specialized ships and probes to scan out and map the local hyperspace routes. Although the Empire does not immediately send a capital ship through, Deep Space Nine and the entire region is in a precarious position. The Klingons get wind of the situation, and Starfleet, the Klingons, and the Cardassians begin amassing a small fleet on their side of the wormhole. The Romulans quietly observe the situation with great interest, and they put their fleet on alert. It is starting to look like the Dominion War all over again unless the Federation manages to defuse the encounter with diplomacy. A diplomatic delegation is immediately assembled and a message is sent to Imperial Scouts that the Federation wishes to meet with the Empire's leaders. Starfleet Command's strategic assessment of the situation is grim. The Empire is a foe comparable to the Dominion or even the Borg. It is not so much a technological superiority, but an industrial and military superiority that is simply overwhelming. The Empire has military assets that far outweigh the Federation Klingons and Romulans combined, and they are poised to expand. The diplomatic mission proceeds. Grand Moff Tarkin is selected to represent the Empire, and the talks do not go well. The Empire is not interested in exchanging culture, technology, or trade goods. It is only interested in the complete in total submission to the Federation and its allies to the Empire's will. Only then would the Empire spare them of a bloody conflict that would result in the slaughter of hundreds of billions of people. Of course, the Klingons have representation in the delegation as well, and the Klingon ambassador loses his temper and storms out of the talks. War seems inevitable. Starfleet begins to round up and escort all the Imperial scouts back to the wormhole. Some of the scouts, by a very clever hyperspace maneuvering, eludes Starfleet. The Empire brings a fleet of Star Destroyers through the wormhole. Not hundreds, but enough to overwhelm the defenses of Deep Space Nine, destroy several Federation ships, 
and make a terrible mess of things. Starfleet does utilize two forms of technology that seem to surprise the Empire and result in more Imperial losses than expected, and those are the cloaking device and the transporter. Starfleet is able to easily evacuate Deep Space Nine, and the Klingons are able to surprise and attack the Imperial flanks. On rare occasions, the Imperials lose their shields, allowing the Klingons and Starfleet to transport commando teams that catch the Imperial crews by surprise. This is not enough. There are simply too many Imperial ships, and the Imperial crews are armed to the teeth. The Federation is forced to retreat to Bajor, and the Empire captures Deep Space Nine. By this time, the Imperial scouts have gathered enough data to allow accurate calculations for hyperspace jumps to the nearby systems. The Imperials do not waste time heading to Bajor, where they mop up several Federation and Klingon ships and then bombard Bajor into submission, killing millions in the process. And so begins the war with the Galactic Empire. Who do you think will win in the upcoming war between the Federation and the Empire? Is the Federation doomed? Tell me what you think in the comments, and stay tuned for part two of this series. If you like this content, subscribe. Also, it would be really awesome if you became a patron on Patreon. That would allow me to create more content, spend more time on making these videos. So consider checking it out, linked in the description below. Live long and prosper, and may the Force be with you.